Welcome back, fellow travellers, to another eerie journey along Britain's haunted highways. In this second chapter, I delve even deeper into the supernatural mysteries that haunt the country's roads. From missing motorists to spectral soldiers, and even a phantom bus, the stories you're about to hear are steeped in history and tragedy. Buckle up once again as we travel over haunted crossroads, along cursed motorways, and through the chilling tales of the restless spirits who seem forever bound to these thoroughfares. The road ahead is still shadowed. Let's begin our journey into the unknown. Would any discussion of haunted roads truly be complete without mentioning the Romans? Architects of the four great ways of the realm, Ermine Street, the Foss Way, Watling Street and the Icknield Way. Thousands of miles of road built 2,000 years ago on a scale that wouldn't be repeated until we started the motorway network in the 20th century. And the echoes of those who built and used those ancient feats of engineering can still be heard and seen. There's a phantom legion that marches along Flowers Barrow, an Iron Age earthwork at the western end of the Purbeck Hills. The first recorded sighting of this mysterious column was in 1678, and they are said to reappear at times of national crisis. Another cohort can be seen on the M6 in the Midlands, marching calmly through the tarmac as though it were water, clearly keeping in contact with the original Roman metalled road surface. More spectral soldiers stride confidently along the stony Stratford Road in Milton Keynes, and a lone legionary has appeared on the A5 near Lutterworth. Roman citizens were not allowed by law to bury their dead within their settlements, so the use of roadsides as burial sites became common. Not to punish those who had died, though it's interesting that these boundary areas later became liminal spaces, where those who had transgressed because they were witches, criminals, gypsies or just poor were disposed of. So it's not just the roads themselves that are haunted by travellers, traders and invaders. The land around them and beneath them has many secrets to reveal as well. Hidden away on a quiet stretch of Dobbs Lane in Kesgrave, Suffolk, is one such mysterious roadside burial site, known locally as Dobbs Grave. Tucked between the boundaries of Brightwell, Foxhall and Martlesham, it's a site of local lore steeped in eerie tales and unanswered questions. Tradition holds that Dobbs was a shepherd, driven by despair to end his life by hanging, though over time some began to claim that he wasn't a shepherd, but a gypsy hanged for the crime of sheep theft. Others whispered that he had been wrongfully accused, cursed to remain in his grave while his true story faded from memory. The tale might have been lost entirely, but in 1936 a group of locals grew curious about whether there truly was a body at the site. Fueled by alcohol, they decided to dig and uncovered a human skeleton, long buried beneath the earth. Rather than treat these remains with respect, one of the men pried a tooth from the skull and wore it as a decoration on his watch chain. Further desecrations were attempted in the 1940s and 1960s, but on both occasions, a shadowy presence scared the trophy hunters away. Historical records add yet another layer to the tale. In 1721, the twin sons of a John and Anne Dobbs were baptised in Kesgrave, only for Anne and the babies to be buried later that same year. John Dobbs himself remarried after their deaths, but his own burial isn't recorded, sparking speculation that he might be the poor soul unhappily laid in this unmarked boundary grave for committing suicide, a crime in the 1700s. Perhaps there is a lesson here about digging up the past, about not disturbing someone or something that should be left well alone. 
Sometimes what we see on the road isn't what it seems. On a routine evening in December 2002, motorists travelling along the A3 near Guildford, Surrey, witnessed a car veer off the southbound carriageway, headlights blazing. Concerned, they called the police, certain they had just witnessed a crash. But when officers arrived at the scene, there was nothing. No wreckage, no skid marks and no evidence of an accident or collision. It was as if the car had simply vanished into thin air. Undeterred, the officers searched the area further and what they found was truly chilling. 20 yards from the road, buried deep in the undergrowth, lay the twisted remains of a car. Its headlights long extinguished, the battery dead, and its driver now nothing more than a skeleton. This was no recent accident. Authorities later confirmed that the crash had happened five months earlier, in July, and the driver, a 21-year-old man from London, had been reported missing around the same time. Yet, for months, thousands of cars had driven past, oblivious to the tragedy hidden nose down in a ditch just yards from them. How, then, could those motorists have seen a car crash that seemed to have happened months ago? Was this a ghostly replay of the accident? An echo of that fateful night when the driver lost control, forever imprinted on this haunted stretch of road? Was it the result of a time slip? Or was it the lost spirit of the driver? Trying to call attention to his final resting place in a dreadful, desperate call from beyond. Let's head from the busy roads of Surrey to the desolate Lincolnshire Fens, where the long, lonely stretches hold their own unsettling mysteries. It was on one of these isolated sections of the A15, just north of Sleaford, that in 1998 Kevin Whelan encountered something he would never forget. It was around 2am and the road ahead dark and empty. As Kevin approached the Ruskington turn, a strange bright shape caught his eye. A fuzzy white shadow like a distant headlight. As his car raced past the spot where he had seen the strange light, a man's face suddenly appeared, staring directly at Kevin through the windscreen. One hand was raised in a gesture. Was it a warning? A plea for help? His mouth was open, but no sound came. His skin was pitted and scarred, his dark curly hair framing the terrible sight. Kevin's heart pounded in his chest, his grip tightening on the wheel as his breath caught in his throat. After what felt like an eternity, the figure faded away, leaving Kevin distraught. This experience came to light when Kevin called in to ITV show this morning during a discussion about ghosts, leading to other viewers ringing in with their own eerie stories based along the same stretch of road. A bus driver in the 1960s was sure he had struck a man who darted out of the ditch. Yet when he stopped to check, there was no one there. A milk tanker driver was convinced he'd run over a person one winter morning, but found nothing when he searched for the body. A woman and her boyfriend hit a shadowy figure that ran out in front of them, but drove straight through the apparition. Host Richard Maidley dubbed the phenomenon the Ruskington Horror, and a number of theories were put forward about who or what the horror might be. A 12th century knight, a plague victim, an executed highwayman, even a Polish pilot who died in World War II. Given that sometimes the horror is a featureless mist, while other times the detailed face Kevin Whelan saw is described, and that some witnesses say it is casually dressed, but others have recognised an old-fashioned military uniform, perhaps there isn't just one ghost here. Perhaps all of the above lurk in this low-lying landscape, 
making themselves known at different times and for different reasons. Whatever the truth might be, this is certainly a road where dark events have left their uneasy mark on the surroundings. Our journey now takes us to the heart of London, where it is easy to accept that the bustling city streets are home to myriad supernatural occurrences, but perhaps more difficult to believe that at the junction of St Mark's Road and Cambridge Gardens in Kensington, a phantom bus once caused panic among locals. Appearing out of nowhere at 1am with its headlights blazing, this bus would speed through the streets without a driver or passengers in sight, causing chaos for anyone who crossed its path. Drivers would swerve in panic to avoid a collision, only to turn back and find the vehicle had vanished without a trace. One man even crashed into the wall of a house after swerving to avoid the fast-moving bus. When he looked back, the road was empty. No bus, no sound, nothing. It was as if it had never been there. This bizarre phenomenon made the newspapers during an inquest in 1934, following a fatal accident at the same junction in which a 25-year-old engineer named Ian Beaton died. As witnesses came forward, it was revealed that local residents had seen the phantom bus on multiple occasions. One couple claimed to have witnessed it half a dozen times, and the bright lights and roaring sound of the bus would often wake people from their sleep. Despite these reports, no evidence of an actual bus was ever found. While sightings of the bus dwindled after 1934, the tale has become one of London's enduring urban legends. Paranormal books and websites have kept the story alive, despite the fact that no new sightings have been reported. Some authors, like Peter Underwood in his book Haunted London, believe that the Phantom Bus may have had a very real purpose. The junction where it appeared was notoriously dangerous, prompting the local council to widen the road and remove part of a property's garden to improve safety. Once those changes were made, the ghost bus was never seen again. Was this a case of a restless spirit warning the living of danger? Or merely a spooky tale that's grown legs, or wheels, in the retelling? Whatever the truth may be, the story of Kensington's phantom bus is certainly intriguing. Our final stop takes us to Nottinghamshire and the junction of the A60 and B6020 roads between Ravenshead and Mansfield. Here can be found a small stone with a plaque that reads, This stone is erected to the memory of Elizabeth Shepherd of Papplewick, who was murdered while passing this spot by Charles Rotherham, July the 7th, 1817, aged 17 years. Known as the Bessie Stone, this monument, believed to be the only murder stone of its kind in Nottinghamshire, was erected after a young woman who had been looking for work in Mansfield was killed on her walk home. The report of the case in the Cambridge Chronicle and Journal in August 1817 makes grim reading. Charles Rotherham, aged 33, was capitally indicted for the willful murder of Elizabeth Shepherd at Sutton in Ashfield, Nottinghamshire, by striking her on the head with a certain hedge stake. He then rifled her for a pair of shoes and an umbrella and threw her mangled body into a ditch where it was found the next morning in a dreadful state. The brains protruded from the skull and one eye had been knocked out of the socket and rested on the cheek. The judge ordered him to be executed on Monday. The prisoner stood unmoved during the passing of his sentence. Maybe unsurprisingly, there have been several reports of eerie goings on at the site of Elizabeth's murder. Legend has it that if the stone is disturbed, the ghost of the dead girl will appear. And sure enough, when the stone was moved back a few yards during road widening in the 1930s, a misty white figure was reported at the site. In the 1950s, the stone was hit by a passing car, after which a couple driving to Mansfield claimed to have seen a ghostly white form hovering above the memorial. The attack on poor Elizabeth was brutal and unprovoked. 
and I can only imagine the terrible fear and pain imprinted on this location. The dreadful act should be remembered, but not at the expense of the memory of Elizabeth, described as an interesting girl and one who fought for her life, a life that was worth more than a pair of shoes and an umbrella. As with Dobbs' grave, let's leave her memorial well alone if it brings her some peace. As we've seen, Britain's haunted roads are filled with mysteries that defy explanation. So, the next time you find yourself driving down a lonely stretch, keep your eyes peeled, because you never know what might be lurking just out of sight. Before you go, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're enjoying these paranormal journeys. Let me know in the comments if you've had any spooky encounters on your travels. And, as always, stay curious, stay safe, and keep an eye on those mirrors. You never know who, or what, might be following. <laughs>